Hello, good afternoon. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Could you please introduce yourself? Sure, sir. My name is Himanshu, and I'm uh, a ServiceNow GRC consultant with five years experience uh, working across policy, compliance, and risk management along with audit modules of ServiceNow. I have delivered multiple end-to-end -end GRC implementations. I have handled uh, control testing automation, custom risk scoring, and CMDB-based entity mapping as well. Uh, in my career, I have worked with both the Indian and US clients, and I focused on building practical, scalable, and audit-ready solutions for GRC. At my current uh, company, I am handling a team of two people and uh, handling our GRC project as well. Okay, let's start simple. How to explain ServiceNow GRC to a stakeholder who is not from IT? Uh, sure, sir. Uh, so, sir, GRC on ServiceNow stands for uh, Governance, Risk and Compliance. I usually explain in this way. Uh, let's say, uh, imagine your organization has dozens of policies, uh, risk, regulations and audit happening at different levels. And you have everything without a system like everything is in Excel sheets, emails, or Word documents, scattered, okay? Now, ServiceNow GRC uh, bring all of that under one umbrella, okay? Your complete organization setup is now under one thing, that is ServiceNow GRC. A link risk to the controls and ensure that everyone from compliance officer to a CISO has a clear view of organizations, risk, and other entities. It is not just a documentation, it is a real-time tracking automation and accountability that ServiceNow GRC brings into the organization and help the organization targeting the goals, keeping GRC in control. Okay, great. So tell me, how does policy and compliance management actually work inside GRC? Sure, sir. Great question. In ServiceNow GRC, policy and compliance management starts with defining your policy statements, like we have ISO, GDPR, etc. Now, after that, these get linked to the authoritative sources. Then you map those to the controls, which are actually things you check in real life. For example, a policy might say, encrypt data at rest, okay? And you will link it to the control, like uh, is the database encrypted using AES-256? Along with that, compliance managers can then test these controls periodically, log issues, assign tasks, and then track them all till closure. The dashboard in ServiceNow GRC helps showing the compliance posture visually using various indicators. And it will further simplify and you can easily take decisions based on that. Got it. So you now imagine you run a test for 200 controls and 20 fail. What is your next step? Okay. Uh, so sir, uh, first thing I do is categorize. Okay. Not all controls failure are equal. I check whether any of those are linked to high risk areas or regulatory requirements. Then I create a, a issue okay, for each failed control using a create issue button from the UI which we have. If it is something critical, then I also tag the risk or audit team. Okay. Meanwhile, uh, I assign remediation tasks to control owners and define due dates and SLAs as well. I also make sure that the test records have evidence attached to it, uh, such as screenshot, log statements, etc., etc., because we don't want auditors uh, to come back again and later ask for all these proofs from the team. So in this way, uh, I'll take care of the next step. Okay. What is the real role of entity types in risk management? Yeah, sure. Well, let me explain it in a very simple manner. Entity type in GRC are like categories of things uh, you want to assess risk against, okay? For example, application, process, location, business units, all these can be entity types. So if I am assessing a phishing risk, I might attach it to a email gateway application or customer support business unit. So this helps during the risk rollups, like show me all the risks, tied to our Bangalore site or finance department. It also improved traceability when the auditor asks, where does uh, these risks live? Means where to find uh, these particular type of risks. Okay. 
one scenario for you an audit is starting next week what do you prepare yeah it happens sir the moment i hear audit i switch the gears first i review the audit engagement record in audit application then i check the scope objectives and stakeholders after that i ensure that all the controls in scope are tested up to date and with evidence uploaded properly i usually runs compliance scorecard as well as control test dashboard okay after that uh, i prep the stakeholders like control owners and send reminders for pending tasks if it is a regulatory audit in that case i also create a read only workspace for auditors with a limited access to only what is in scope okay no unnecessary exposure so i'll do all these kind of preparations before uh, the audit starts and get ready for that okay let's go deeper how do you configure a risk scoring formula in service now uh, yes sir risk scoring okay uh, so in service now you can use risk criteria table to define scoring logic okay so in this we usually deals with two parts likelihood and impact okay each uh, has levels like uh, high medium and low with numeric weights so we configure a scoring formula using a risk score calculator script include or in the grc risk criteria setup let me give you an example uh, i can define total score as likelihood into impact okay so you can go advanced with the script that uh, add modifiers like uh, control effective or business impact so for automation uh, i use business rule or flow designer to update the scores dynamically whenever there is an attribute change okay what is the purpose of risk register okay sir uh, so sir the risk register is like a single source of truth for all the risk okay uh, like current risk emerging risk or historical risk it contain metadata about each risk its title owner impact area inheritance residual score status mitigation plan and various other linkage to the policies control and issues it is usually for both top down and bottom up risk management okay for example a top down risk like a data breach from a ciso can get linked to a multiple application and when any control under those fails the risk score updates automatically and the visibility improve across the board so we can say this is the best use of risk uh, register okay great what if a company is using their own risk methodology can we handle that yes sir absolutely that's actually one of the grc stem okay uh, so the platform support customizable risk frameworks so instead of using uh, the default scoring model i can configure custom fields like risk velocity or reputational impact okay build custom scoring formulas as well and even plug in external risk rating using an api uh, so i have done this already in projects where client has coso and cobit based methodology you can also customize workflows in that as well uh, like auto escalate any risk with residual score over 70 to the risk committee okay so finally we can say that having uh, their own uh, risk methodology uh, it should not be a problem it can be dealt easily and with perfection okay good tell me how control testing differ from risk response testing great question sir so control testing is about checking if your preventive or detective controls are working as designed or not it's a it is a kind of proactive part of the compliance whereas risk response testing is more reactive after this response like uh, mitigation has been applied you validate if that response actually reduce the risk or not for example you deploy a firmware okay kind of risk response then you simulate a penetration test to validate if it is working or not the record and evidence might live in different place but both contributes to audit defense 
and continuous assurance. Okay. If I ask you to automate test scheduling, how would you approach it? Okay, so sir, in that case, I will use a test plan feature within the GRC application of ServiceNow. A test plan allow reoccurring schedules weekly, monthly, or quarterly. You assign test templates to control objectives. Define who own the test and attach the evidence instructions as well. I often combine this with flow designer to notify testers before deadlines, okay? And also with virtual agent for guided testing. If we integrate uh, with task management tools like Jira, we can also push tasks directly to the developer or app owner for the control testing as well. Okay, great. Have you worked with continuous monitoring? How do you set it up? Uh, yes, sir. Continuous monitoring is where things get exciting. Okay. So instead of waiting for manual control test, we set up automated checks using integration with external systems. For example, we can connect with the Tenable to fetch vulnerability data and match it against the control thresholds. We configure indicators and thresholds in a GRC indicator table. And when the system detects the threshold breach, uh, for example, let's say uh, critical vulnerability is greater than five, it automatically flags the control as failed, okay? And even raises the issue or alert based on the logic. So this is how we work on continuous monitoring. What is your strategy for a first time GRC implementation project? Okay, uh, so in this case, I split it into phases, okay? Uh, phase one is foundation setup, where we set up entities, risk framework, policy hierarchy, and control catalog. After it is done, we have phase two, which is data onboarding. In this, we import existing policy, controls, and risk registers, okay? Finally, after uh, uh, this, we have phase three, which is uh, role mapping and ACLs, okay? After that, uh, we have the phase four, where we have test plans, risk assessment, and continuous monitoring as well. I always suggest starting with a pilot process or department, and then once we have good result in that, we understand it properly, then we have to scale it, okay? Then we have to scale the things. And finally, I can say that never underestimate enablement, okay? Uh, I always conduct UAT workshop, uh, live demos, hands-on session with the compliance team. This will provide me confidence and provide the team confidence uh, so that uh, the project is working good. So uh, this is uh, uh, the strategy which I can suggest to anyone who is implementing a GRC project for the first time. Okay, real world challenge. Control owner is not updating test result even after the reminders, how do you handle? Uh, yes, sir, uh, that happens a lot, okay? So in this case, when the control owner is not updating the test results, even we have reminded it many times. First of all, uh, I check, maybe the reminder flow or email notification is broken, or they did not get access to the test task. Because we have to check firstly, if there is anything going wrong from our side, okay? After all, that is okay. Then I escalate softly. Okay, usually loop in their manager or compliance lead and ask them again that uh, this is pending from your side. Okay. And I have also seen that sometimes people just don't know what expected. Okay. So I offer a 15 minute walkthrough. If it is critical, like SOX or PCI control, I flag it uh, as a risk in itself and escalate to the GRC steering group. Okay. Can you tell me how GRC integrates with CMDB? Sure, sir. Uh, you know, a well-maintained CMDB uh, help identify entity relationships, okay? So it is very, very important. So for example, a risk linked to a service can automatically be linked to underlying applications, servers, and data centers via CMDB relationship. So this is uh, very helpful when we do risk impact analysis or incident correlation. So I often use business service in CMDB as an entity type and apply GRC assessment to them, okay? Uh, we also 
can use uh, discovery data to automate the entity population. So uh, these are the few ways uh, we at present are integrating a CMDB in GRC at my current organization. Okay, final one. What are the some common mistakes companies make while using GRC on ServiceNow? Sure. Uh, so the, the top one is trying to implement everything at a once. Like I mentioned previously, we have to divide it into phase. GRC is one of the application, one of the module which is best done in iterative model. Okay, iteratively. Second part, people treat it like a documentation, not a live process. Okay, so this has to change. It is having a lot which is, uh, you know, live, which is uh, impacting the real things. It's not just a documentation. If anything fails, your whole company is in danger, okay? In other projects, only that project is in danger, but but uh, GRC implementations and all these risks and all uh, can have the potential uh, to target the complete reputation of a company, okay? So we have to uh, change our mindset here. Thirdly, uh, people skip stakeholder training, okay? So I have seen clients uh, go live and the control owners don't even log in. Okay, so this also has to change. Everyone should be properly trained. They understand their business properly. Then only they will be able to uh, provide some input. Also, uh, one more thing I can say, over customization uh, without governance model leads to upgrade nightmares. So we have seen it uh, that people are customizing up to you know many levels. So this customization need to be stopped. Okay, uh, we have to use governance models which are agile. We have to uh, be uh, use uh, service now out of box things mostly and try to make it accordingly. And the last one which I can say here that people underestimate the data quality, especially in the risk and control descriptions. Okay, so as we say that once you fill garbage, you will get the garbage. So if you feed uh, good data in your policy and risk, you will get uh, good uh, risk assessment. You will get good, uh, you know, uh, comprehensive uh, coverage of GRC there. But if your data is bad, obviously you will struggle a lot. Okay. Thank you for your time and thoughtful responses. Thank you so much, sir. Welcome. Yeah. Bye. Bye.